I am honored to introduce the creative, talented director, producer, writer, winner of over 35 awards, nominated top ten best filmmaker in Montreal. With over 15 years of experience, let's welcome the president of Chic Art Productions, Patricia Chica. Central America International Film Festival, Take Four. My name is Patricia Chica. I'm a Central American filmmaker. I was born in El Salvador in the 1970s, and since I was a little girl, I remember I used to draw pictures in order to tell stories. That was my dream. I wanted to become a storyteller. Once I was given a camera to record the vision in my head, I knew that I had the power to transform people. My mission today as a filmmaker is to reach out to an international audience so I could inspire and also entertain. And that's why I am asking you too to tell your story. What is your story? ¿Cuál es tu historia? Central American International Film Festival. In the beginning, I heard something that I really liked. ¿Cuál es tu historia? What is your story? Patricia, what is your story? Well, I was born in El Salvador in the 70s, and uh, my story is very similar to about two million Salvadorians. When the war struck in my country, my father uh, left the country because he was a university student and he went to Mexico uh, trying to get a visa to go to Canada. And he finally got through and from there he worked any job he could find from uh, cleaning bathrooms to painting walls to earn enough money to bring uh, his wife, my mom, and the three kids. And I think uh, six months later, he was able to gather enough funding to pay for the tickets. And this is when uh, my mother and my two little brothers, we had to uh, go to Canada. The thing is that back in the day, um, that was in 1981, they were not giving visas to Salvadorians to go to Canada because they knew there's war in the country, so they will come and, uh, you know, and move here. So we had to lie, and from Mexico City, we bought tickets to go to Madrid with a stopover in Montreal. And when the plane landed, uh, my mother just took the kids and uh, brought us out of the airplane, and it was the last flight of the night and uh, the, the plane left to go to Madrid with all of her personal belongings, the luggage, and we stayed there. And we asked for a political refugee status. The interesting thing that I found out, uh, now that I'm an adult and I, you know, I, I researched, is that Canada gave political refugee status exiled to all the Salvadorians, which I think uh, the U.S. didn't give back in the day. So we, we've, we were very lucky because my parents were paid each week to learn French because they wanted all immigrants to uh, become assimilated to the Quebec culture. So my parents, uh, they, they said, if they're giving us money, instead of working, cleaning bathrooms, we're going to go learn French and sit in a school uh, for five days a week. And that's how they were able, all the Salvadorians in Canada were able to educate themselves uh, very highly if they wished, because they had that opportunity. And they were also able to, uh, to get citizenship very quickly. And my parents prospered. Uh, they became professionals, and I was able to educate myself, and I became a filmmaker which I'm very grateful for. So <clears throat> Canada was a very 
welcoming country, and there are about 200, 250,000 Salvadorians in Canada. 50,000 are in Montreal, where I'm from, and uh, there are many in Toronto and Vancouver. So that's my what, story. What inspired you to become a filmmaker after the whole story of your family in El Salvador, which we, at that time, we probably, or you probably didn't know many filmmakers from El Salvador. Well, I didn't know any filmmakers in the world. Uh, since I was a little girl, I remember I wanted to tell stories. And I, I, I've been very artistic. I love to stage people and to direct people, to guide them. Uh, I think I'm, I'm a teacher in a way that I like to guide people to empower themselves creatively so they can believe in themselves. And uh, for me, cinema was a very natural choice since the beginning because it encompasses everything that I love to do, which is to direct people, to create, and to, cre to utilize all the art forms possible from uh, visual to uh, write a story to sound and music and how we use rhythm and energy to create emotion and engage an audience. So cinema is the right tool for me, and that's what I will do forever, I think. Wow. <laughs> what is your process uh, with your writers? When you, are, when you have planned to, to, to do a film, what is the process that you take or you have with the writers? I love collaborating with writers. Is about elevating an idea because I have a very strong ideas and then that moment of dialogue with a writer is really the most beautiful and profound collaboration I can ever have because we're building a story and I contribute in a way that's very visually powerful so I would have the visual that goes with an uh, a message or a, a line and sometimes I would go through a script and just get rid of a lot of lines and find ways to tell the story visually and I'm very good at working with transitions from scene to scene the rhythm of a scene and that brings me to talk about actors because I think when you write a script it becomes alive once the actors start talking the lines and you know when we do the table reads this is really the moment when you can elevate the story to the next level so all of those things are part of the writing and storytelling process and the third part is the editing i'm very involved in my edits uh, it's something i'm very particular about because it, everything is about detail and creating a, a very strong message so I edit most of my films, and I really enjoy it. It's, it's, uh, I started doing it because I didn't have money to pay an editor. And finally, I found that it's even better when I do it myself, because I really put the love and the hours and uh, the passion into it. And I think it shows on, on screen. So On top of not having money to pay for someone to edit for you, what else? Uh, inspire you to do that and how do you enjoy it? Oh, I enjoy it very much. Uh, sleepless nights. <laughs> it's me and my computer. Uh, I had many boyfriends uh, upset about that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Spending all my nights in my computer. That's your lover? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> boyfriends, uh, husbands, ex-husbands, uh, anyway. So, true story. <laughs> Joke aside, uh, I started editing when I was 16 years old, uh, and I started filming and editing. So for me, it's a process like visualizing, capturing the image, and editing. The editing is so personal. It's about creating rhythm and dynamics and associating lines with visuals and scenes and reshuffling the structure of a scene to elevate the story and it's all, always about the story even selecting actors takes it's an art form and i'll give you an example uh medusa in serpent's lullaby all the shots when she's just looking 
sitting on the chair and just looking. She was just sitting, and that's behind the scenes material that my behind the scenes camera took. So I will really go in every bin and find, like I would look at every, every, everything, even between the moment they say uh, camera rolling and action, those moments are magical because actors, they don't know they are being filmed. And sometimes they would just be doing something that's a reaction shot. So all those Medusa scenes were not even part of the script and I took it from behind the scenes footage. And it works so well because, uh, you know, you can really elevate a performance by making it so tight and precise in the edit. And I love that process. That's when I find magic and I'm sometimes in front of my computer by myself. Oh my God, this is so great. And you just put two, two, two shots together and boof, you got the story there. And you don't need to say much when you have really good moments like that. Right, talking about that film, did you sleep after seeing all those snakes? I love to overcome my fears, and I knew I had fears of snakes. I get a rush when I can overcome the most horrific things, and I do it for the, the sake of the art. So there are many films that I've done that I couldn't show at this festival because people would just leave the room, and they're very hardcore. So um, this is like very light what you saw tonight. <laughs> Wow. You can go online on Chikatronica channel and... <laughs> I saw someone getting really scared in the last scene. And I'm not going to say who that was. <laughs> I see also that you teach with a very spiritual energy. How do you do that? I think that what makes good filmmaking is when you can connect at a human level with the subject matter. Even it's if it's horrific, even if, if it's violence, uh, even if it's something dark, if you find the humanity in darkness, you will reach out the light. And Holy Scar, the actor who couldn't scream, uh, he had a huge emotional blockage. And that's part of the reasons why, for me, it was like a, a challenge that I wanted to overcome to help him. Um, come through this blockage from childhood. And I think the reason I make films is to tell very good, profound stories with a strong message, but it's also to help elevate people's lives in a way that they will become better at anything, that they will find self-empowerment, that the movie has a meaning more profound than just the pure sake of cinema because it's an art form that reaches many people at many levels, and it can really transform lives, and it can make you think differently about society. Uh, everything that happens in the world, there's a reason for it, but if you really open your mind to understand and find compassion, and with Ceramic Tango, what I wanted was for people to stop judging those who have HIV and seeing them as uh, a threat because they're all human beings. And when you show the, the other side of the illness or the lifestyle, you find some connection. The reason why I make films is also when after the, the screening of Ceramic Tango, there was uh, some people from the HIV community present at the premiere and after the screening, everybody came. They lined up to say congratulations, to give me a hug, and all those things that people do after a screening. And there was this man who waited half an hour because he wanted to talk to me and didn't want to interrupt and being among the crowd. And he came, he took my hand, and he said, this movie really moved me because I have been living with HIV for 30 years. And it's the first time that I feel good about it. So, you know, that's why I make movies. I want them to be entertaining, but I want them to... Just that man who said that uh, really touched my heart. And I felt, okay, I sold my house for this film, but there is somebody who feels better about 
you know, uh, the movie. And I've gotten, this was the first one, but I've gotten so many emails, letters from people on Facebook. People write to me in private and they tell me how they don't have HIV, but they suffer from depression or they've been through challenges with their health and how this movie made them feel a little better because somebody understood what it... The message that you are trying to project in your films, because every film that I just saw, uh, each of them are different. And I feel that behind all the blood or, or all the scary things that we can see, there is a message. What is that? There's always a message in every one of my films, and that's why I choose my scripts very carefully. My style is that there's always a surprise ending that people didn't expect. For example, a tricky treat, it's like a role reversal on how humans abuse animals or nature. It's about consumption. And I wanted to reverse the roles because if we did what we do to nature or animals, to human beings, would it be okay? It's humorous, so bringing the lightness into the story was an easier way to connect with the audiences. Otherwise, it would be too gory or too violent, and people would just be disgusted. But at the end, when you see the pumpkins, it makes you smile, and, oh, okay, it was just the pumpkins. But then, if you keep thinking, you will find your own conclusions. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's great. Uh, Patricia, what can you tell us about your experience as a Latina woman filmmaker in a male-dominated field? There's a lot of shift going on in the film industry where women are getting more uh, important roles. Uh, I've been a filmmaker all my life, at least since the age of 16. That's all I've been doing. Uh, I didn't really have other careers outside of film. So that's who I am. And I've been uh, on mostly male-dominated sets. Like, if you look at my personal sets, there's a lot of men uh, in the key roles. My DPs are always male, production designers, um, uh, the crew guys, techni technicians, they're all male and sound recordists. Uh, I love working with men. I have no problem at all. I was raised in a family where there were uh, only brothers, so I've always been like the, the female leader. Uh, I know s there, there are challenges, but I'm very geeky, so I love talking about cameras and lenses and techniques. So to me, it's like a good collaboration. And my best collaborators, my writers, DPs, are all men and I get along with them, and we, we have fun working together. So, Do you get along better with men than with women, working-wise? It depends about the person. Uh, I have very good male producers and very good uh, female producers. Um, I think for me it's more about the person. It's about do they get it? Are, are we going to make this better than what I have in my mind together? That's good. <laughs> Uh, there is a question that I should have done it before. Uh, out of curiosity, are you a healer? I'm conscious of it now after watching the documentary, but before Let It Out, I was using a lot of energy in my work with my, my team people, my actors, even in my personal relationships, but I wasn't conscious of it. Possibly I'm a healer. I'll let people that I've healed tell you. I think you are. Mm, thank uh, you. There is a large menu on all your films. And I say menu because uh, every film is different. You have from music to uh, thriller, you have uh, comedy, you have drama. Uh, what is the gender that attracts you the most? It's the story. It all comes from the material. Uh, I don't have a preference. I just love working with good actors, good stories, and good producers. Lack of opportunities for women in this industry uh, has been really big, not only in the United States, but everywhere. Do you think this is going to change? I think it's up to me to change it. I don't count on anybody to <laughs> give me jobs. I create my own jobs. 
and I always I'm always creating something so I always find a way so I, I don't I'm not hoping that somebody will come with a silver plate I just do it right that is being a woman <laughs> yes that is being a Central American woman yes a South exactly. American woman uh, <laughs> Patricia there is uh, you you speak three languages English Spanish French I saw uh, English and French. Is there any Spanish project coming up? I hope so. I, I really wish I could do a Spanish movie. I haven't found the script, so if anybody wants to present me a S Spanish project, I would be more than happy. I would love to work with uh, actors who speak Spanish and good material. Since we are getting to the end, any words of wisdom for the people that are here listening and the ones that are going to be listening later on, uh, how to make it, how to keep going in this industry? I would say what has worked for me is to always follow your purpose, be aligned and congruent with what you want to do, always follow your heart, always do what you love and what has a meaning to you no matter what other people say, because if you keep aligned with your purpose and the things you want to do that makes you happy, you will always succeed. <laughs> Thank I you. would love to give the word now to anyone who would like to ask. Anything? She was fast at raising her hand, yes. When was the last time, or have you gone back to El Salvador? And have you shot anything there, uh, or are there plans to? I've only been back once, and it was for my father's funeral. So I, I didn't have cameras or anything, but I, I've been working and developing a script about my story. And so many people have read the script, and they love it. It's just a little challenging to find funding for, it's called Lost in Salvation. It's, I lost my culture, I lost my country, for the sake of salvation. And that script is ready to go. And we even got some development funding from Sodec in Quebec. It's a Latin American story uh, from El Salvador and who's gonna f fund. It? So it's, it's a challenge, you know? But I would love to do it. Hello, my name is uh, William Noevela, but they call me Bill here, Billy. So I'm director here del Centro Chicano at USC. My parents are from Guatemala, so I'm very proud to have you up there. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to ask you the question about Latina woman doing a film, or maybe encourage you know thoughts on writing a story or doing a story of film about Central Americans, but Central Americanos, right? The ones who live here. I, I think that would be a great story. So I guess my my question is, do you? What do you think about that, and, and is that something that might interest you? I would love write the script and let me read it. Somebody has to write it and come to me, or, and, or a producer. If you're a producer and you, and you have good material, it has to be really good, though. So, <laughs> because I get a lot of scripts and I don't read much because I just don't have the time. But if you think you have something that will bring me to the Oscars, as a best foreign movie, here I am. Hi, my name is Liliana Vasquez. Uh, well, I was also born in El Salvador in the early 70s. Do you find doing your projects in Canada easier than, say, in the United States because of the market um, in general? Like Canadian film is not profit-driven as it is in the, can in, in the United States because it's uh, government funding and their goal is to create the best content possible that has the identity of the country or the province. And the prestige of uh, bringing out the voice of Canadians in the world is, I think, the most important thing than to recoup the costs. Here in the US, what's the most important is to recoup the cost for the investors because it's uh, equity, it's more like um, uh, private investment. So the stakes are different. Patricia, thank you very much, and thank you for also working so hard to put all these uh, films and all of the Central America International film uh, together. Thank you so much, because this is 
one and one beginning for Central America that you are bringing to a different level. Well, I would like to thank the audiences, uh, festival programmers. It goes hand in hand. I make movies, you program them, you come and watch them, and uh, this is how it works. Please go watch independent cinema in theaters. Encourage independent filmmakers and um, follow me on social media as well. Patriciachica.com. There you go.